853A differential multimeter from Fluke. I'm not really sure when I have put a bid for this thing on eBay. I've realized it after I got the payment alert from eBay saying I have to pay for this thing. So it's a warning for me that I should not be drunk and uh, be on eBay. Anyways, long story short, I had to pay for this thing and uh, here it is. This is a differential multimeter. I have seen different videos on YouTube talking about differential voltmeters from Fluke, but this is a differential multimeter. This thing has got a very interesting dial. Unlike traditional multimeters, there are no three or four uh, ranges marked on the dial. And uh, there's a midpoint, which is a zero, what you see there. That's used for differential measurements. And the normal dial is used for uh, your normal multimeter measurements. So like any other multimeter, you have a mode selector switch which is this guy which is going to select the mode which you're going to use this on whether it's going to be dc voltage which is dc plus or dc minus or uh, ac however for each mode there are two different options or within a mode you have two different modes on which you can make a measurement the dir and diff which means the direct measurement or the differential measurement the direct measurement means you are just going to use it like a normal multimeter. The differential measurement means you're going to use it like a differential multimeter. And for the differential measurements, you have a null sensitivity, which is this particular knob, what you see here. That's going to control how sensitive your uh, differential measurements are going to be. And of course, the next piece is the actual uh, range selector switch, which could be volts ohms or uh, the current range. If, if you look at the volts, you can measure it from 1 volts to 1000 volts. Uh, and from a resistance perspective, it can be from 100 ohms to 100 mega ohms. And for the current, it can be anywhere from 0.1 milliampere, which is 100 microamps to 10 amps. And both direct and differential measurement can be made for all these ranges. You have two sets of inputs. Uh, the left ones are uh, used for uh, normal measurements, current, voltage, resistance, everything. And the 10 amp one is on the right, which is used exclusively for the current measurements at 10 amps. And at last, where you have these knobs, which uh, lets you adjust the value or it's a precision divider, which lets you control what is the input given to the differential multimeter function. So this is used exclusively for differential measurements. This is the rear side of the instrument. This is an AC operated instrument. There is an option for an internal battery pack. So as I was going through this, I found a very interesting problem. All the functionalities are working, which is a good part. The problem is in resistance mode or in ohmmeter mode, three ranges are intermittent, which is uh, 1 meg, 100k and 10k. They are just random. Sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't work. It is a schematic for uh, 853A and we need to look at the schematic specifically for ohmmeter mode. This is the schematic for uh, the ohmmeter section. At a high level we can divide this into two blocks. The input switching blocks which connects the input measurement terminals into the resistance measurement circuitry through the dividers or which is the range switch technically. And the other portion is used for um, differential measurements. Uh, you can see the reference supply in the schematic here on the bottom side and the reference divider and the decade port used for the differential measurements. So we need to chase the switch terminals which are used for the three ranges where we have problem with. So let's zoom into the schematic. And on the top right corner we have the switch position numbers. The switch number is S1. You can see that 1 meg 100k and 10k are using positions uh, 13, 14 and 15 in S1 or switch 1. Let's go back and start looking at the schematic. This is one wafer of switch 1 which is S1, 7a, 13, 14 and 15. There is nothing common for all three unless it's one of these resistors. Let's look further and we have one more section. Looks like more of a potential candidate because for 13, 14 and 15 there is one resistor sitting here which is common for all the three ranges. 3.16k, A2R53. Either this resistor is blown or it's open. Let's figure out. This is the range switch the main range switch in the instrument. And let's zoom into that 3.16K resistor, which is right here. Hope you can see that. That's a 3.16K resistor. The fun is not in the resistor. It's the same resistor from a different angle. Have a look at this. 
this resistor is not even soldered. It's not a broken solder joint, but at the factory when they put it together, the solder did not flow into the lead of this single resistor. And surprisingly, it lived all this far in this condition. Another view. So that was an easy one. Okay, I'm not gonna calibrate this instrument now. Let's do some basic measurements and see how far it's off calibration. Let me plug this guy to power. Let me power on the instrument. They haven't used a power on indicator, rather just used a disc with a green mark. And right now it's sitting in DC plus direct measurement mode. Let's do a quick direct measurement. If you look at the meter, it's reading five volt DC. And that's what I'm applying to this instrument from my power supply. As you can see, it's reading exactly five volts. Let's see the power supply output. This is the power supply, which is feeding the meter and you can see the voltage is at 5 volts. Okay, how about this for a comparison? My HP 34401 6.5 digit DMM. Before we proceed further, let's quickly look at the difference between direct measurement and differential measurement. The easy way to understand that is uh, by using a weighing scale like what you see here. If you're taking a measurement using a direct measurement weighing scale, the precision of your measurement depends on how granular you can go with the scale. So using the same theory, this is the differential multimeter where you have a known weight on one side and you're trying to measure the unknown weight which you're going to put on the other side. Now the precision of the measurement is completely controlled by how granular you can go with the weights which you're going to add here which means the more precise weights which you could add to balance the arm that's how precise your readings are going to be so that's the fundamental concept in a differential multimeter the whole mechanism is implemented using a null detector where one side is fed with a known reference value using a precision divider so that you can adjust the weights to balance the null detector and the other side is where you apply the unknown value so now we understand the basics of uh, differential measurements let's do some measurements and see how far it is matching with a modern multimeter or digital multimeter that is the 5 volt reading and now let's measure this using the DMM so I'm gonna hook the DMM terminals parallel to this guy and you can see it's about 5.19 volts so let's see if we can measure 5.19 or maybe let me increase it a little bit more like say it's 8.4 let's make it 8.35 for a change now let's see if we can measure 8.35 in the differential mode if you look at the direct reading scale it's recording slightly above 8 about close to 8.1 is what it is recording let's see what the DMM is saying about it 8.35 to do differential measurement what we basically need is a direct measurement to get the range which we have already now we're going to dial these knobs to make it close to the directly measured value so in this case i'm going to move it to somewhere close to 8 and then we will nail down the actual voltage let me move this dial to Eight, and then we will proceed with the differential measurements. Of course, the first step is to switch the meter to differential mode. And as soon as you do that, you can see the meter needle is moving all the way to the right. And then we can try adjusting the least significant digit or the least significant digit dial here. There is no movement. Then I'm going to go to the next position and see if I can find a balance or a null. It's not there. Let's go to 8.2. No movement. We'll come back. Then 8.3. Oh, there we go. So... You can see the needle has gone back. The idea is to balance the needle in the middle or make it null, so called. As you can see, a plus and a minus sign across both sides. So this is coming to null close to 8.5 eight sort of a value so the current reading at the meter range is close to 8.358 to 9. let's see what the dmm is saying let's measure this on the dmm 8.358 okay i wouldn't complain looks like the dc volt range is still kind of perfectly calibrated and now if you see here the needle is still dancing around a little bit in case if you're trying to measure a value and it's moving too much or flipping too much you can reduce the sensitivity of the whole null adjustment using this knob then once you kind of get close to the range then you can increase the sensitivity so you can see the response on the meter is smaller as you have decreased the null sensitivity Now it's about 8.361 or so. Let's measure it, 8.36. So 
the input from the power supply itself is moving around a little bit and you can precisely monitor that. This is still not yet into null because it's moving. And you can see the null pointer is or the, the needle is moving to the left and right because if you watch the digital meter, the power supply output itself is uh, drifting a little bit. Long story short, you can make pretty precise measurements. Now you would have seen this already in other videos using differential voltmeters. Now let's measure resistance and current using this differential multimeter. Let's start with a pretty high value resistor. This is a 22 meg resistor. Let's measure it using the DMM and uh, then we will try it using the differential meter. I'm gonna measure this resistor using the DMM, 21.916, 914, 91. Let's call it as 21.91 meg. And let's measure this using the fluke. Let's do a direct measurement. I've attached the resistor to the leads of uh, 853. Let's try a direct resistor measurement. So I have to switch this to resistor, 100 meg range, and complain close to 21, 22. Let's do a differential mode measurement now. So since I know it's a 22 meg resistor, I'm gonna move this to two, maybe one to start with. Move this to differential mode, yep. As you can see, it's it's 21.96 or 97 is what I read. Let's go back and measure it with the DMM. That's the same resistor sitting across the DMM leads. So it's 21.924. So the resistance measurement is a little bit off. The calibration needs to be checked there. Let's do the last piece, the DC current. Right now I am sending about 83 microamps through the DMM as well as through the fluke. As you can see, the fluke is reading close to 80, 81-ish microamps. And um, it's in 100 microampere range. That's the lowest current range possible. This could be AC or DC. I'm doing all the measurements in DC for the time being, but you could do all of them in AC as well. And the range switch is in DC direct measurement. For the differential measurement, I'm going to change my dial to 8. And then we will go to differential mode and see if we can get the exact value. So it's 83. So I should be going to 83. And null out the value. So it's about 83.4 is what I'm reading now. And if you look at the DMM, 83.5, 83.4. So this is how precise this thing can measure. I've shown all DC measurements here, but you could do even AC. It supports both AC as well as DC differential measurements. Now, am I gonna use it every day for my work? Uh, no, I may not, but I'm really happy to see how precisely you can make measurements using a differential meter. Now let's get inside and see what is inside this instrument. Let me take out the rear cover of the instrument. Very, very simple and elegant construction. This is the connector for the battery and the battery sits here, which is an option. And there is only one PC board, which you can see on the right side and all the components, the null amplifier, the DC to DC converter, which is used for the power supply and the main regulator, everything sits inside that, including the reference voltage source. When I started, even this fuse was blown. This is used for the emitter. There are two transformers used, one for the main power rail, and the other one is used in the DC to DC converter. That is the main precision reference source for the differential function. This is a selected part, and if you're replacing this, uh, the manual says you have to replace a set of components along with it because all of them are matched for uh, specific performance or characteristics. And rest of it is you know, just a simple uh, power supply and null amplifier. This is the main mode and range switch. These three are used for the differential dividers. So that's about it. I hope uh, you guys find it useful. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, do take care.